Hello there, welcome to Through the Eyes of an African, reaching you from the banks of the Mandina River Lodge here in the Gambia. We're about to embark on a 25-minute boat ride that's going to take us through the narrow creeks to yet another river-based resort situated on the north banks. I'm Yvonne Bassi, and here's welcoming you to yet another exciting edition of the program, reaching you from the smiling coast of Africa. Do stay on with us. The Gambia is a small, intimate country situated on the Atlantic coast at the bulge of Africa. It consists of a thin ribbon of land at no point wider than 50 kilometers, running east-west on both banks of the River Gambia. Bordered to the west by the Atlantic Ocean and on all other sides by Senegal, it also happens to be the smallest and westernmost African nation, made up of a low plateau that decreases in height as it meets the Atlantic Ocean. The Gambian population is made up of eight ethnic groups, along with some fairly large communities in West Africa, and the result is an intriguing mixture of Francophone and English-speaking people, with integration blurring the borders between nations, religions and cultures. On behalf of the Director General of the Gambia Tourism Authority, uh, I would like to welcome you to the smiling coast of Africa. Our visit to the Gambia begins with a half-day orientation tour that takes us through the pristine streets of Banjul and surrounding areas where important landmarks set the tone for the one-week tour. Arch 22 serves as a distinctive gateway into the Gambia. It is a commemorative arch that was built in 1996 to mark the military coup d'etat that overthrew the democratically elected government of the time and saw the rise to power on the 22nd of July 1994 of President Yahya Jammeh and his armed forces ruling council. It is one of the tallest structures in the Gambia and stands on eight columns which support three floors with access to the upper floors made through elevators and spiral staircases. With tourism ranking high as a leading foreign exchange earner in the country, as well as a veritable tool for the eradication of poverty, officials of the Gambia Tourism Authority have since identified the need to erase the widely held misconception that all the Gambia has to offer is simply sun, sea and sand. These are birds that um, cross the Gambia or live in the Gambia, especially sometime between October through to February. Efforts are now being made to create a healthy balance between the high and the green seasons of the year by wooing across business and leisure travellers from the West African sub-region, as opposed to depending solely on the European tourists for the winter trade alone. At the present moment, we're only, uh, the lodges are only open pretty well for European uh, clients from uh, the 1st of November until the, uh, the 30th of April. From the 1st of May until the 31st of October, there's a whole different clientele that are coming, you know. And so we're trying to, uh, the Gambia in general is trying to uh, create tourism all year round. And so of course the prices are different as well. There are different prices, there's European prices, and there's African prices, so to speak. Efforts are also being made to develop new areas of interest within the various tourism subsectors, all in a bid to break the monotony of the regular sites, many of which have been visited constantly by the same set of tourists over the years. There are unlimited earth-friendly resorts in the Gambia, all of which possess individual charm and elegance, which tourists find irresistible. Deep in the African bush, to the northeast of Bakama, 
The Makasutu Cultural Forest is a study in ethnic creativity set against a stunning green wilderness that is continually fed by a tributary of the Gambian River. The name Makasutu is a local Mandinka word, which means a holy or sacred forest, and a sojourn into its depths certainly provokes in one a feeling that borders on reverence. At the Makasutu Craft Market, handmade creations accost you at the gate, with larger-than-life features that define the expressions of cultural objects while abnormal limbs underline the abstract nature of African art. The resort itself was conceived in a sensitive manner, with structures designed to fit into the spaces dictated by the trees, so that nothing is an intrusion, but rather a complement of nature. For further inquiries about the production of top-of-the-shelf TV documentaries, promotional reports and future stories, contact Through the Eyes of an African through any of the following numbers 0802 3600 539, 0807 314 5307 or send us an email at yvonnebassi at yahoo.com Through the Eyes of an African, an obsession with tourism and media excellence.